Hello, it's Jimmy, and this is another video where I'm going to talk about books that I read in 2018. And this is going to be my first video where I talk about a couple of fiction novels. Most of my videos so far have been talking about non-fiction books. So, the books I'm going to talk about today are... Freshwater by Akweke Emezi, which I previously mentioned in my video for Reading Africa Week and which the publisher sent me, a Faber and Faber, the UK publisher, sent me a copy of this, which I'm holding in my hand, because I was reviewing it for NB Magazine, issue three, which is out now, so I'll put a link in the description if you want to check out that magazine with my review of this book in it. The other book I'm gonna talk about in this video is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. So what ties these two books together? Why am I talking about these two books today? Well, they are both drawing on the author's real life experiences. So Freshwater is by a part Igbo Nigerian and part Tamil writer and artist. And this book, although it's a novel, is explicitly semi-autobiographical. So it draws on the life experience and the life story of the author of growing up in Nigeria and going to the US for university and various aspects of their experience along that way. Um, it also, it draws heavily on Igbo tradition um, and Igbo religious and spiritual concepts especially this concept of Obanji, which is a kind of spirit from Igbo tradition. And Akweke Emezi identifies as Obanji and has written about that in essays. Um, so I'll put a link to some of those in the description. And the main character in this book is also... Uh, part or banji. It's difficult for me to describe outside of the terms of the book itself, which I think one of the things that the book does really well is it, a lot of it is set in this very mystical context and uses these mystical um, ideas to express something that's both a real experience and kind of an experience of the mystical. And I think that comes across really strongly. So it feels very real, although the setting is uniquely mystical. I, I don't know if there's a better word for it than that. Um, I also feel like a major theme of this book is trauma. And a lot of what drives the plot and the character development is a major trauma and smaller traumas that kind of follow indirectly or directly as a result of that major trauma. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of it builds on experience of sexual violence is one of the main traumas. Affection, sexy, sensual, spiritual, wise, one of the most dazzling debuts I've ever read. And I'd probably agree with that quote, except for the word sexy. There's a lot of sex in it, but the sex that's in it, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call sexy in any way because of the relationship with trauma in all of those scenes. But it's a really interesting book. It's kind of unique in terms of books that I've read at least in the way the story is told and the story itself, which has different layers, some of which you might see more commonly in books but because of the way they're interwoven with these other layers, 
the whole thing is a very unique and engaging and exciting read. So I'd recommend, if that sounds appealing, Freshwater by Quake Mezzi. And the other book that I want to talk about today is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. And I love this book. It's brilliant. I really, really like it. This is also based on, I think, less directly, um, but partly the experience of the author. Because the main character is in her mid-30s and has spent her entire adult life working in this convenience store. And I'll just read the, um, the about the author from the back of the book. A best-selling literary sensation, Sayaka Murata has won the prestigious Akudagawa Prize as well as the Gunzo, Noma and Yukio Mishima Prizes. In 2016, Vogue Japan named her one of their Women of the Year. She is 38 years old and works part-time in a convenience store. And from what I understand, she has also spent basically her adult life working part-time in a convenience store. So I'm sure while the rest of the plot and a lot of the other circumstances of the main character's life probably don't match with Sayaka Murata's life, the character is not a very successful author, for instance, um... A lot of the stuff, especially about working in a shop, is drawn from the author's experience of working in a shop. And I... So I had come across this book because it came out in English this year. I'm not completely sure when it came out in the original Japanese. Um, and it was quite a hit in, in English. So I was seeing it about places, but it didn't really appeal to me for one reason or another. Until I heard about, until I listened to a po an episode of the podcast, What Page You On, which is one of my favourite podcasts. And one of the hosts of that podcast worked in a bookshop for many years and said that, firstly, both the hosts loved this book. But the one who had worked in the bookshop for many years said that this book had the most accurate description of working in a shop that she had ever read. And I work in a bookshop and I thought, that sounds great. I want to see my experiences of working in a shop reflected on the page and what I'm reading. And even though it's a different kind of shop, this podcast host worked in a bookshop and she liked it and found it relatable. So I borrowed it from the library and I loved it. It's very short. It's... Uh, It's very short, it's 163 pages, but I think it's the perfect length. I I feel like I could reread it again and again. Part of what makes it brilliant for me is the, it really comes across the rhythm of the shop. And I think that's what the main character loves about the shop, is the rhythm of it, where you almost become part of it. It becomes so familiar and you're, instincts and responses are finely tuned to the different situations you encounter in the shop and it's i found it a little bit like watching a workplace sitcom like the office i love the american version of the office and i think sitcoms in general are driven by the situation and the familiarity of that situation the familiarity of the type of people you encounter far more than the um, overarching plots in most sitcoms anyway. So something like The Office has dozens and dozens of episodes um, and you get in this rhythmical familiarity with the characters, with the setting and that's what makes it such a comfortable watch. It's not the most exciting watch, it's not going to teach you that much but when you need to decompress at the end of the day, you're going to feel at home. And I feel like that reading this book. She gets across that cycle, the workplace cycle of the shop really strongly. 
Now, there's lots of other aspects. There's lots of other things going in, going on in this book. And I feel like different readers could take different things from it. There's the fact that the main character is has always been a bit strange and doesn't really get along with society's rules. Um, she's... She struggles with disapproval of friends and family and co-workers for the fact that she's in her 30s and she's unmarried and she still works in a shop. There's a weird, creepy, misogynistic guy who comes into it who is a major driver of the plot. There's kind of the... Uh, the there's the story arc of the main character coming to understand herself better and to accept herself more despite all this opposition from the other people in her life. So I feel like other readers who are coming at it with a different perspective or with different life experiences themselves could see some other aspect of it as what really strikes them about this book. And they might love it for that or they might dislike it for that. But I would definitely recommend it, especially if you've worked in a shop or if you like workplace sitcoms like The Office. And it's very short, so I'd recommend it to anyone else anyway. Why not give it a try? I think it's brilliant. So, there we go. That's been Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Malata and Freshwater by Akweka Amezi.